Hello everyone, and welcome to another cartography lecture video. And in this lecture video, I want to wrap up our discussion on the sort of terms and concepts of map projections by finalizing this idea of, at, of case, talking about tangents and secants and why these lines and points of contact and intersection matter. And so what I want to do is I want to take two, I want to take this example with the tangent case and this example from the secant case, and I want to look at, sort of blow them up a little bit. So what I want to do is I want you to think of this arc as the Earth's surface, as the surface of the reference globe. So this is the surface of the reference globe. I'm going to draw in blue here. All right, this blue line here, this is going to be our developable surface. So all I've done to sort of give context here is I've basically cut I basically cut this out right here right this orange box is this sort of rotated 90 degrees so we have the piece of our developable surface the surface of our reference globe and then the point where they intersect is right here so this right here this is our point of tangency And you could imagine if we had this in, th in three dimensions, right, this point of tangency would be a line, would be a circle extending out like that. All right, but why does this matter? Why does this tangent case matter? Why does secant case matter? And what I want to do is I want to actually erase all that stuff. And I want to attempt, if I can here, to redo the selection and grab just the white line. Okay. I want to redo the blue line again, but this time I want to do the secant case where we cut through twice. Right, so again, for reference, that would be this case right here. I'm pulling I'm pulling this piece right here out All right oops you want that to be there we go so this is our developable surface and then with this secant case Right, with the secant case, right, we have these two points. We have a point here and a point here, where we have these two points of intersection. So this top one up here, this is the tangent case. This is the secant case. And so the reason why this matters is it has to do with distortion and that, that idea of scale, right? So back in one of the first videos, we talked about this idea of the reference scale, right? The reference globe was made to match this scale that we were interested in trying to make our map at. Now, here's the reason why this matters. Where the developable surface touches the reference globe is the only place Right, I'm gonna actually write this over here, right? Where the developable surface touches the reference globe. Is the 
only place you actually have the proper reference scale. Right. Where the developable surface touches the reference globe is the only place you actually have the proper reference scale. And I want you to think about that from the, when we were talking about developable surface shapes and I had the graticules and I showed you how when you have the, the cylindrical case you end up with parallel perpendicular lines. When you have the planar case you have the point and the radial out the radial outs, concentric circles outward, right? In this case, what I'm talking about is the idea of exaggerated scale and compressed scale. And what I mean by that is if you think about, back to our example here, if we were to put a point here on the reference globe, put the point here on the reference globe, here on the reference globe, here on the reference globe, here, 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 and here. And you think about shining the light through, right? What will happen is you'll go here, you'll go here. This point, because you're on the point of tangency, right? You're intersect, this is where the, the two surfaces touch. Here and here here, 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 and here. So hopefully what my diagram is making clear here is the fact that with a single point of tangency, right, in the tangent case, the farther away you go from the tangent, from the tangent line, or the point of tangency, right, your scale is going to constantly be exaggerated, right? This area right here, Right, we are exaggerating the scale. And what I mean by that is if you look at the developable surface, the points are actually farther apart than they should be right, at the reference scale that we're trying to go for. So wherever we are on either side of the point of tangency in a tangent case, right? we're going to start exaggerating the scale, making things bigger than they should be. The farther away you are, the worse it gets, right? And you can see that sort of if you think about these in terms of distances from the circle, right? The farther away you are from this point of tangency, the more error you're going to have. But let's talk about the secant case for a second because the secant case works slightly differently, right? You can see for this area here and this area here, right, we have a similar situation. The line is getting farther away from the developable surface. Right, this is exaggerated scale. So again, out here, things are going to appear bigger than they should. But what's happening in here? What's happening between these two points, which we would call secant points or points of intersection or secant lines? What's happening there? Well, here we actually are compressing the scale. So what that means is in between the secant lines, we are actually compressing the scale, which means anything on the reference globe is going to appear closer together than it actually should be. All right, let me repeat that. In the tangent case, no matter what we do, when we go away from the point of tangency, we're exaggerating the scale. Things are going to appear farther apart or bigger than they should. In a secant case, we have two options. 
if we're outside of the area between the secants, secant lines, we're exaggerating the scale, meaning things are going to be bigger than they should be. If we're in between the secant lines, then we're going to be compressing the scale, which means things are going to appear smaller or closer together than they should. Okay, Let that sink in for a second. Tangency, we have no choice but to ex exaggerate. Secant, we can exaggerate, but we can also compress. So why does this matter? Why do we care about point of tangency, tangent versus secant, and this idea that we have only one place where we have the true reference scale? And this is the trick. This is the magic behind map projections. We talked about aspect, right? We talked about class. Well, we can adjust and tweak and change all those parameters so we can actually control whether or not we have a tangent case or a secant case. And by adjusting the shape and size, we can actually move these lines around. So if we wanted to map North America, right, we could make a map projection by com combining the conic class with the secant case with the oblique aspect to make it so that these lines of secant, these secant lines, run across North America, say somewhere through Michigan, Ohio, Wyoming, Oregon, and through, say, Florida, Texas, and Southern California, so that we're having the least amount of possible distortion in the, in the geographic area that we're most concerned with mapping. I know that was kind of long-winded. Let me repeat that. The reason we care about this tangent and secant case is because we have the option to just exaggerate or to exaggerate and compress, and we can, through manipulation of the size, shape, and aspect of the map projection, we can control the location of these tangent and secant lines, secant lines to make sure that we're minimizing the distortion in the areas that we're most concerned with. Okay? And again, these tangent and secant lines are the only places that we're actually going to meet our reference scale. Hopefully this makes sense. And as always, if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.